Hey, here are a few basic troubleshooting uh, steps you can take in Windows to try to resolve what's going on with your computer. Now, obviously, I can't tailor this to everyone's particular issue, but these are a few steps you can take yourself to try to either fix or just get to the bottom of what might be causing your particular issue. So from the uh, desktop here, I'm going to right click on the Windows Start menu there and a new menu appears and I'm going to pick Windows PowerShell Admin. You may see Command Prompt Admin, but they, the same command we're going to run will work on either. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click Yes. And the first command I'm not going to run because it actually takes a bit too long to run, but I'll show you it anyway. So we're going to type SFC, System File Checker, and a space, then a forward slash, and then scan now and scan now is one word with no gap in between so that's s c a n n o w oh no windows go away <laughs> oh dear sorry windows is a pain anyway so from here i can press enter and it will run that uh, test if you like and if it finds any corrupt files it will fix them uh, it generally will fix them. If you come up with any other errors, then there's more to SFC. I might put some links in the description to help explain that. But for now, this is like a, a first step if your computer is running a bit weird. So you can try that. Um, after that's run, you could then try check disk, chkdsk, chkdsk, and a space. And we're going to check drive C. So I'm going to type C and put in a colon. That's the two dots and a space and a forward slash that's the one on the right hand side and an x so what this is doing is running check disk which is just going to check the files on the hard drive make sure they're not corrupt we're checking drive c that's the bit after the space and then the bit after the next space forward slash x is a command that normally unmounts a hard drive and also then applies fixes now in this case drive c is the one we're running from so if i press enter now it's basically going to say well, you can't run it you're 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 using this disk would you like to run it the next time it restarts so i'm going to say yes press enter so the next time the computer restarts instead of the normal boot sequence you're going to see um a, another option that will come up and it'll say do you want to skip the disk check and in that case just leave your keyboard don't touch anything and let it finish and then at the end it may or may not have uh, fixed any sort of corrupt files you can also run this on other drives just be aware that that forward slash x will forcibly unmount a drive so make sure you're not accessing stuff from that drive so for example you could do check disk e or f or whatever you want basically so the next thing we're going to look at is task manager i think it's actually going to reveal something now because i can see the computer appears to be running quite hot yep so if I go, let me, sorry, let me go back to how you would see it. So let me go to, uh, where is it? Here, view details. So this is what you may see when you first open Task Manager. Um, just click more details there to get this view. And from here, I've also added some other options. If you right click any one of these columns, you have some extra options. I've added command line there. That shows you the command that's running and often the path to where that command is running from so it could reveal a program that's running something that's draining your cpu um, and you can get rid of other columns you don't need uh, and move them about you can drag them to the right or left or wherever you want so if i click name this is all the tasks in alphabetical order these columns here are showing the usage of the computer so the cpu right now is quite high if i click this it puts them in order of the highest amount of usage if i click it again see the arrows down if i click it again the arrow goes up and it shows the least amount so we're, we're only really interested in the most amount and right now uh, i think this is probably running an update that's often the cause of uh, your computer running slow basically uh, i can also go by memory and actually no anti-malware is running so it's checking the computer for viruses that's another very common uh drain on your computer's resources and the way windows works you kind of just have to let it finish i'm sure it's just collecting data and sending that off but hey that's windows and there's also the, the disk usage column there so we can see that there's a lot of disk usage there and you can expand that and you might see something that is downloading a, an update i think if i click into the settings there i'm going to go down to updates 
and it's likely that it's yes so it's doing stuff at the minute which is what i suspected so just by using task manager you can see roughly i mean a bit of knowledge will be built up over time i can see now that microsoft edge is updating and so on and so on so if you see the sort of microsoft stuff running then it's just windows being windows but if there was another program running and you weren't sure of what it was then you could obviously investigate into what particular program that was and why it was causing the issue that it was causing so i'm running a virtual machine here because it helps me show you what's going on here and this particular virtual machine has quite a machine sorry has quite limited resources so the ram as you can see is very high there if your computer's kind of regularly getting over 80 percent of its memory full then it's uh, either time to upgrade your ram if you can or try to reduce the programs that are running when you're using com your computer because it will run slower as you run out of memory so what it does it will use your hard drive to kind of buffer the memory or the ram processes and if you've got a, an old hard drive it will run in particularly slow so which kind of leads on to performance here so i'll click on performance i'm just going to change this view to how you would have seen that oops so you may see it like this so this is showing the cpu usage cpu usage of your or my computer here if i right click and change the graph to logical processors this would uh, show the actual processors that are in your computer so my computer i think it has six cpus but i'm running a virtual machine here and i've particularly only given it two of my um uh, cpus here you don't need to worry about that too much but just this view here is quite handy because you can see how your computer is spreading the load of uh, work and if you if let's say you've got eight cpus and only one of them's maxed out then that particular program isn't really utilizing the full power of your computer so we can go down to memory there as well and again this is quite high for what's happening but then i've only given windows 2 gig which is very low uh to compare to what it requires um really today uh, ideally you'd want to compute with 16 gigabytes of ram just because of the way windows runs you can get by with eight and you can struggle with four uh, the more the merrier but it works out quite expensive and some computers you can't actually upgrade the ram they're soldered on but that's another story and the disk usage here is quite handy to see as well if it's like maxed out then there's pr it's probably using virtual memory or there's some other kind of uh, heavy process going on now this disk is described here as hdd which is the older style hard drive now i'm actually running an ssd but because this is a virtual machine it kind of doesn't work that way but you will either see hdd or ssd ideally you want an ssd in your computer because hard disk drives are very slow for running your operating system from um, they're a bit more reliable but they're just too slow for modern uh, computing and then down there we've got our ethernet usage what, what how much uh, internet's being used we've got app history there doesn't really i mean it can be kind of useful because you can go by cpu time and i can see that this computer has actually spent a lot of time running the microsoft store well six seconds to be fair but it's been running that and i might not want it to do that game bars running there i might want to disable the game bar skype's running there well, maybe i don't use scope so i should uninstall that and so on uh, in the startup here i can see what programs run when the computer starts up and it shows the impact so there's skype i don't actually use skype so maybe i should just uninstall that you know there are a few steps you could take there and then there's the usage by user you might have a couple of users on the same computer and so on and so on this sort of stuff in here gets a little bit more uh, detailed so i won't go into that into any real massive degree so that's task manager um, we've also got if i right click here we've got a device manager this shows the device is connected to your computer if you see a warning triangle or some sort of error or alert type thing then it's likely that you've got a driver that's missing or damaged or needs updating and you can usually do that by just right clicking on a driver here go to properties you can do it there as well but i prefer to do it under properties and driver and then you can update your driver there or 
Windows may have forced its own driver on your computer and you might want to roll back the driver. Obviously there's not one here, but if there was, you have that option to try that. Um, a very common problem I've seen is graphics drivers where Windows just forces a new driver and it often breaks the compatibility. So there's a way of rolling it back there. Unfortunately, Windows tends to just do things without your permission and it can cause you quite a lot of work undoing what it's done but that's just how windows is i actually run linux now and i might do some videos about that if anyone's, if anyone's interested linux is a free alternative there's a lot more detail to that but i uh, yeah let me know in the comments if you're interested um so those are like a few kind of basic troubleshooting steps you can try there there's also some other options in here if i click on the power button here and I'm going to go to restart. I'm going to hold down shift. That's the key next to your control key. It might have an up hour on it. Depending on the keyboard, it might say shift. So I'm going to hold down shift. Oops, I've held it too long. Ignore that. So, <laughs> so I'm going to click on power. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click restart. Keep holding shift down till it says please wait. Now we see a new menu and from here we can troubleshoot. So in here, you may see a lot more options depending on your computer and the drives and a lot of other things, but we're going to go to advanced options. And then from here, we've got a lot more options here. Startup settings is the one we're looking for. And it just tells you what you can do. So I'm going to click restart. And ignore that. That's because I'm running a virtual machine. So now I've got some options and I can pick from the options. So I'm going to enable safe mode. What safe mode will do is disable all the drivers on the computer. So when your computer starts, the display may look quite poor. It might not even display. If it does, it's not an issue. You just restart again and it'll go back to how it was. But um, what it can be used for is Let's say your computer normally takes a really long time to start. Um, I don't know, like five minutes or something crazy. But then when if you try booting it from safe mode, it might boot really quick. So that suggests there's probably something, a driver or a, or a startup program that's significantly, you know, impacting your system. And that's where you can kind of poke around. So I'm going to press four on the keyboard and that's going to boot me into safe mode. So I just wait for that to restart. Oh, no, it won't do that because I enabled disk checking. So unless earlier when we typed check disk, I told it to run check disk on the next boot. So what this will do, this will actually override uh, the safe mode that we picked. So I'll have to redo that. But that's not an issue because now you can see how this runs. And also I'll show you now an alternative way to boot into safe mode without having to log in, which is quite handy sometimes especially if you've, you don't know the login for someone's, uh, for a particular account. In other words, if there was someone else logged in. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to, it's almost the same thing. I'm going to click on the power button. I'm going to hold down shift. While holding shift, I'm going to press, press restart and say, keep shift held down and type and press, sorry, restart anyway. And you should see, please wait. You can let go of the key now. And please wait, that means it's going to show this menu. And we're going to repeat what I just did. So start up settings and restart, wait for the menu to appear. And we'll press four. Okay, so this time we'll load in, we'll boot into safe mode. And you'll know that because in the corners of the screen it should say safe mode. So I'll just log in here. Okay, so uh, actually it's cropped the screen a little bit because again, I'm running a virtual machine, but you can see the word safe mode there in the corners. And if I go into device manager, like we did earlier, this time we should see a lot of warnings. That's because none of the drivers have loaded. So if you saw these warning triangles when your computer normally boots, that shows that there's an issue there. So anyway, from safe mode, you have a little bit more control over certain things because uh, other parts of the computer haven't loaded. You can remove drivers a bit easier. There are a lot of other kind of uh, things you can try here if they didn't work when you were booted normally. Anyway, I can't go into much detail there because obviously it 
depends on your use case. So I'm going to restart the computer again. And there's one more thing that I'm just going to show you. There's quite a few things you can try, really. These are just a few steps, a few basic steps, really, that you can just use yourself to try to, you know, dig into what's going on with the computer. Actually, there's two things I'm going to show you. <laughs> so I'm just going to log back in. So before I showed you Task Manager, there's also, there are quite a few other programs actually, but there's also another one we're going to search for. So I click the Windows icon there. I'm going to type Resource. And Resource Monitor is basically very much like Task Manager, but it has a lot more detail. So now I can click, there's an overview, or I can go into the CPU like before, except this time I can see services are listed there. They're kind of like the back end of Windows. And I can see what's using the CPU there. Again, I can click the columns or the, the current CPU usage. There's a lot more detail in here. So I can see this process. SVC host is kind of used by a lot of processes. And they're often hidden behind this. So you can't get to the bottom of what they are, unfortunately, which is a bit of a pain. But if you see that running, generally, there's not much to worry about. It's just Windows doing something and you've got no control over it, unfortunately. Uh, you can see we've got our CPUs down the side here again. There's one and two. That's the kind of overall, that's the service or these, the background processes there. We can go into memory again. We can go into disk, see which programs use the most disk usage, but in a bit more. So the swap file is when virtual, or it's used for virtual memory. Uh, we can go into network and see specifically what uh, address in some cases, uh, the data is coming from or going to. So you've got send and receive. So this is pretty useful. Um, there's also a couple of programs. There's a few programs. One's called Auto Runs, and that is like Task Manager, but it goes into more detail. It shows you um, the specific processes that are running on boot and enables you to remove them. But it's quite dangerous in, in that you can delete a lot of processes uh, that you shouldn't be able to delete so i'm not i'll mention it i'll put a link in the description but only use that if you know what you're doing and there is another one called process explorer which is again goes into more detail with uh the processes that are running so one more thing i'm going to try what i'm going to show you is event viewer and i'm going to click yes whenever this oh it didn't ask me okay so we're going to custom views and we're going to administrative events this might take a while for this to show, depending on your computer. So just be patient. Eventually, this will come up. Now, you'll see loads and loads of errors here. N nearly all of these are nothing to worry about. So don't be alarmed when you see this. But let's say you had a disk just unmount by itself. You won't know why it unmounted or what the issue was. Well, this is where you might see some more information. So in here, I'm just going to use up and down on the keyboard here to go through the settings here most of the warnings here uh, relate to it not being able to download something or access was broken or whatever you know most of this isn't anything to worry about but if you saw a specific um, program in here for instance um, EA has a, like a game store that used to cause a lot of problems on an older computer I had and because of this it listed it and I knew what it was so I just uninstalled it but this is pretty handy if you go through the list here. See that I'm using an unactivated version of Windows because this is just for a demonstration and it's come come up there in the errors. Um, nothing that interesting here really going through. There's an issue there with Skype. I don't use Skype. I don't want to see that error. I can just delete Skype. And again, don't go deleting everything and worrying and panicking about this. But let's say, I don't know, you're using some Adobe software and something's not quite right you may well find the kind of description of what's happening in there anyway that's quite a lot of information uh, hopefully some of this has been useful to you if it has please give me a thumbs up or if you'd like to subscribe please do that thanks for watching